good morning. I'm not going to waste time with an introduction this time. I'm just going to start talking, get right into it, and those who want to listen or join on here live, that's awesome. I feel there are several people that at least the ones who are engaging with me on my theories who are still fighting themselves and this is what made me I have a reason for everything I do everything I post but this is what made me post the video from Terence McKenna on fear and psychedelic advice because if anyone knew about DMT and psychedelics and what comes with psychedelics it was Terence McKenna and this is where I feel a lot of people use his materials to kind of get the perspectives which they themselves do not want to go inside of taking a hallucinogen is not for everyone and to me, it's the quickest portal from this dimension to another. It's the quickest way to see not only through the illusion, but become the whole, become the entirety. So basically what I want to talk about is one equals infinity as infinity equals one, because we are all one, yet infinite. And I feel many people are still having a challenging time with this concept of oneness we we want to create these limits and boundaries for ourselves as far as i'm i'm not this person but i'm a spirit so by you creating the illusion that i am a a spirit inside of a body you have now created a boundary and then when you say i'm a spirit but that spirit is the spirit of god you are now creating another boundary and then when you say that God is the Almighty, the Omega, and there is nothing beyond this, you have now created a wall for yourself which you cannot get past. And when I speak about this wall, it's a mental wall. There have been a few people who have talked to me about hitting a mental wall or a physical wall in their hallucinogens or their psychedelic trips. I had one brother that actually wrote me a very interesting story on his, his experience with DMT. And he talked about hitting this wall, and it's it's pretty terrifying when you actually hit this wall, and I have done so myself. But what I personally feel this wall is, is it's our mental, our minds creating more illusion, more boundaries for ourselves. And as long as we're doing so, we're, we're, we're looking for something that's not actually there, in a sense. So what I've said that we are, basically, is we are a, a type of artificial intelligence. The human race is a form of artificial intelligence, which is the only life form on this earth that is convinced of its own organic existence. But as I've said, the human race has to appear as everything we are not so that we can study everything that we are. And this is where the patterns of nature and the patterns of, of, of this creation, sacred geometry, this is where we can follow these patterns and they're speaking to us. So we're not just merely human, and there's a lot of people giving, you know, me trouble on this but again I don't mind it because I understand the rejection I understand it's very hard to let go but in the sense of you letting go you're also shedding attachments to all ideas all biased opinions all illusory things you have created for yourself you have now by releasing attachment you are, are opening the door to infinity which is what we actually are but by shutting the door on infinity, you are basically just like any other human being that's saying, I am a human being, I am not a form of artificial intelligence, we are better than computers, we are more 
realistic than computers. We are more divine than computers. And see, we can make all these names and give the human being this name and this. But the fact of the matter is, is we're not any of the forms we're appearing as. And that is the way into infinity, is by losing the attachments of the identity and of the temporary forms we appear as. This is what I feel DMT is somewhat trying to show us when we go into the other side, we not only become or, or heighten our awareness, our sense of awareness becomes heightened and we, we exit the body because we are seeing that we are this infinite awareness. And by us remaining as just in this body, our consciousness just in this body, I now have boundaries, meaning I am appearing as a finite being. I have an identity through what I am appearing as, but it's not to be confused. What I'm appearing as is just my host. It's not what I actually am. But I need the ego, I need the host to become self-aware of everything that I am not because everything that I am is what I am actually not beyond the ego. So by creating ego, by creating identities, by creating forms, which is the human being, by creating forms, we now have identity, we now have boundaries, for instance, there is a distinction between me and the room. Outside of my body, I am infinite, so that means I am limitless. There is no limits to my being, because consciousness is forever. Which means I cannot distinguish myself in the room that I'm inside of right now. Outside of the body, there is no room and there is no me. All is one. But through this body, through my host, I can distinguish my physical body and vessel from the room that I am inside of. I can touch the ground and say that this is the ground and it's separate from my body because I'm experiencing it as such. I'm touching the floor. It's physically here. But oneness is not something that's easy to admit to oneself. And this is why I've said the people who cannot admit this to themselves, this is where some people, some, look for assistance or guidance through psychedelics, through hallucinogens. And with respects to people who call this nonsense, everything that you know to be real, everything you call life, reality, is nothing but a hallucinogen is nothing but neurons exploding in your brain and being sent from one place to another. That's your entire experience. But as of right now, there are people rejecting my theories because, you know, they're saying we're very distinguishable from artificial intelligence and there's a huge gap between us and artificial intelligence and there's differences. So let me back back step a little bit. When we made our first video game, our very first video game as human beings, we were saying to ourselves, this is obviously not our reality. We can distinguish and tell that this is a fake game. The graphics sucks, the potential is limited, and the senses are not being stimulated the way we are here. I have a sense of touch, smell, taste, sight, hearing, right? All this... In a video game, there's only one sense being stimulated, and that's your sense of sight. So with our first video game, we could tell without a doubt, this video game is not our own reality. It's distinguishable because it sucks. The graphics are horrible. You're limited in options. So what did we do? We studied our own creation, which was this video game. And through time, we have progressed this video game up until the point where we're at today, where people are now saying it's becoming less distinguishable or, or more distinguishable from our own realities or I'm sorry it's becoming indistinguishable from our own realities inseparable people are now realizing that virtual gaming is taking off and progressing so much that soon we're not going to know the difference between a video game and what we call life so with respects to everyone saying we're not a form of artificial intelligence and that we can distinguish the human race with that now we can, just as before when we made our first video game, we can distinguish reality from the game because it sucks. The graphics sucked, just as artificial intelligence right now, you could say, sucks. Not really sucks, but I'm just using the, the game reference. Right now it's at, at its worst, right? Artificial intelligence doesn't yet have 
a virtual skin, or maybe it does, Sophia. So they're working on it, right? Sophia, the robot. But these artificial intelligence don't have blood, don't have a heart, don't have organs, don't have a, a, a central nervous system, and a, a um. I mean an entire nervous system, peripheral nervous system as well. But what they do have is a neural network and the theory of mind. But my basic point in this is right now, at this time, people are saying I'm an idiot for this because you can see the giant gap between a human being and artificial intelligence today. So today I am the fool, today I am the nut, today I am the idiot. Let's go ahead five years from now. People will be talking about what I'm saying right now. And most likely, people won't even know what the hell I've been saying all this time. But mark my words, this is going to come out. And this is why I feel, this is my personal opinion as to why I feel Elon Musk started pursuing AI and advancing his AI technology, or at least trying to merge the human with AI. When you do an honest research of the human body, you will come to the realization of the singularity because the singularity reveals itself in all creation because all creation has the potential to become the creator. So just as there is a super intelligence which created the human race and we are looking for this intelligence outside of us, we are duplicating this very intelligence through artificial intelligence and simulated theories, or simulated, uh, simulation theory, simulating our universe, virtual gaming experiences. We're, we're becoming the very creators, and we're, we are developing the very intelligence which started the human race. But it's still at a very early moment right now to where it's distinguishable, so people are obviously not making the connection excuse me, that this is the singularity. And for the ones that are being presented with it, they're denying themselves. They're denying that it is them. They're denying that we are a basic form of artificial intelligence because we, have, we still have attachment to the ego. We still have attachment to the self. And this is why I've said, as long as we're thinking in boundaries, we are not thinking correctly. And that's why I posted the video on Terrence McKenna and his psychedelic advice through to DMT. Because in that video he says, the reason people hate DMT is because it dissolves all boundaries you have of yourself. Any boundaries that you have that you're going to be thinking through, especially when you're searching for your true identity of what you are, any boundaries you have of self, are gone, are dissolved, are rid of. They're, they're dead. That's what happens during a, a, a DMT trip, from my perspective. That's what happens. You are forced to part ways with all attachments you've had of yourself and in your mind of what you actually are. You witness the death of each and every scenario, of each and every illusion, of each and every character you thought you were. This includes an angel, this includes God, whatever God looks like to you, because if you're still thinking in a form and in a definite and absolute shape, you are thinking in boundary. But this is why some people do not understand, because the hardest part is letting go. And the, the best part about this is it's 50-50. There's always a chance that I'm wrong. Because somebody commented, you know, it sounds like I'm not open for error. I'm always open for room, room for error. And that's the best part. That's my favorite part in this is I am not right. There's a chance that I'm wrong. And that is what I most embrace. But as I say, I talk so confidently because... As far as I know, very few people have actually left the body and let go. 100% let go. And you can tell if somebody has let go or not when they start speaking. When they start speaking, you can tell if they've 100% let go or if they're still somewhat attached to ego. And all the ego is is a form, a boundary, a confinement which you are taking a place as in space and appearing as. 
So if I appear as this, if I appear as that, if I appear as this, it's not what I actually am. It is an illusion of what I am not to study what I am. We need what we are not to appear to study what we are. That's why we're given the finite experience. That's why we are giving birth and death. Because outside of a body, outside of an ego, a boundary, a skin, a life form, I don't know beginning. I don't know end. I know chaos because I was birthed from chaos. I am chaos. I am infinity. That is what infinity actually is, is chaos. But that's exactly what Terence McKenna says. We have lost our ways with chaos. We have now tr been trained to fear chaos. And this is why people are clinging to religions more than ever now. Because religion stunts your, your mental growth and prevents you from evolving mentally within yourself. This is a journey into self-discovery. This is your journey of self-discovery. So you can only go as far as you let yourself. You can only go as far as you're prepared to let go of. But this is why I say, once I lost everything, because I have, I've lost everything I've loved in this lifetime. I've witnessed the death of not only myself, but every single person I love. I've already lost. I've mourned them. I've buried them. I've lost them. I've witnessed their death. So with respects, I have lost everything. But it was in the midst of losing everything that I found it all over again by realizing it was never separate to begin with. So the need for attachment is pointless. I don't need to cling to my body. I don't need to cling to a god, cling to an angel, cling to a spirit, cling to any idea I have of myself outside this body. Once you cling to this idea and attach yourself to it, not only do you confuse yourself, but you, you, you have not fully let go. What you're doing is creating a, a, a wall, but you're pushing that mental wall maybe a little further back. So you can say, I'm a human being... But I'm not really a human being, I'm a spirit. And all this does is push your mental wall back. Your mental wall starts right here. And so you want to progress this and study yourself, so then you study yourself and progress it a little bit. It pushes this mental wall back a little bit to where you say, okay, I'm a spirit. I'm a, a spirit having a human experience. So now you're, you're a spirit, you're not a human, which is, again, a mental wall. It's a boundary because you're living through an ego, a form, and you're identifying with it. So you've now created a mental wall for you. This is what stops us from accessing our truest potential of consciousness. Infinity. Everything and nothing. Because now you've created this mental wall. I am a, a, a spirit looking for or having a human experience. So now you're thinking in terms of the spirit. Where did the spirit begin? What created the spirit? What happened to the spirit? Why am I here in spirit? And then, when you realize I'm not really a spirit, I'm a part of God, which is a whole. You, you move the mental wall back even more. So you've broken that boundary between you and your spirit, and now you're studying the gap between you and what you call God. And then when you hit this mental wall, you will realize, oh my God, it's me again. It's me again. I am God. I am what I'm calling God. I am what I'm calling spirit. I am what I'm calling, and so on, and so on, and so on, and so on. You keep pushing this mental wall back because you're identifying with ego and you're identifying with boundaries, which is finite. As long as we are identifying with the finite and temporary forms we are appearing as, we will never see our ways into infinity and we will constantly be looking for our origin, our beginning. What started this? What created this? Creation and beginning does not exist, does not happen in infinity. Infinity is always happened, already happened, and is happening right now. Infinity is, is already one. It's already happened and it's happening now. Beginning does not exist. Beginning does not happen in infinity. End Ending does not happen in infinity. That is true chaos. That's where we are birthed into.
That's where we're birthed from. And that's, as Terence McKenna said, this is what we've lost our true touch with. And this is why we've come to fear chaos. This is why the human being is still stuck in 2019 looking in outer space for its origin. We're looking out, out in outer space for our extraterrestrial life, which when you get to the bottom of why we're looking for other life forms, we're looking for the higher intelligence which started us. But again, we're looking for the higher intelligence just so it can tell us what created us. Which is why we've been sold an image by our government of a green person with a round head and a pointy chin. Because they could not release to the public that what they have found, or what they've found, because it's too shocking. There's no polite or comfortable way to tell the mass of people they are living in illusion and they are the alien life they seek out. This information would affect so many people in so many different ways, some good, some bad, but majority bad, because it's too much to handle all at once. This is why we have stages to our awakening, just as Alan Watts has said. We create and develop these illusionary stages of awakening to prolong our own selves. And what does prolonging your own self mean? It means that you are delaying and putting off your own self. The encounter with your own self. You're putting this off. But this is where I've said, everyone who says that I am wrong in my theories, and that I very well could be, I can only speak on my experiences during my death, out of my body. So that's all I'm speaking on, is my experience. I could be wrong. But as long as we're identifying and stuck, attached to the forms, to the appearance, we're not reaching the root. We're, we're prolonging ourselves and prolonging ourselves and prolonging ourselves. And that's why I say you have to lose everything. There's no other way I can stress that word to, to whoever's listening. You have to lose everything in order to see your way into infinity. This includes the shedding of any ideas, identities, deities you've had of yourself, any illusions you have of yourself, of a god, of a, a higher being, a higher intelligence. Once you lose the attachment of this, you become it. You only need attachment to these things when you do not realize they are you. This is why you cling to them. This is why you cling to, to life. Because you're terrified of death. Because death is the end. But it's not really the end. And you haven't seen your way into that yet. So you're terrified of death. Just as you're terrified to evolve because you haven't seen your way beyond the human body yet. We are the intelligence which we seek. And we are the alien life we seek. This is what I want people to try and realize is... Where did the idea of a human being, a human race, even come from? Where? Where did this come from? Why did we have to be a human being out of any life form which we see? In our movies, I, I mean. We see all these cartoons and different life forms and ways to exist. Why a human being out of all? We didn't have to be this. But we are. We're appearing as this temporarily we were not this before so the only reason we're attached to this form is because it's all we've ever known this is our only experience this is our only consciousness our only memory you only remember up until the day you were born into this identity into this body but that's where i say infinity basically has to view itself as one lens through a form, as everything it is not, so it can distinguish everything it is not with everything it actually is. That's how you narrow the gap between time and chaos, or time and infinity and chaos and order. That's how you narrow the gap. 
This is why DMT and hallucinogens are not for everybody, because some people simply cannot handle the flooding of information that, that comes. And this is something that Terrence McKenna has said in his videos himself. He said that it's very easy to read a book and tell you what's going to happen on DMT. It's very easy to tell you all is one. It's very easy to say this, to say it. You think you understand what all is one is. You think you understand what these books are explaining to you. You think you may understand what I'm explaining to you. But it's not until you take that DMT, that hallucinogen, and it's happening to you. This is what Terrence McKenna says. It's not until it happens to you and you begin to realize, I am no different from them and they are no different from me. It's, it's the moment that everything you know begins to dissolve that you realize once you've taken it. The hardest part is letting go, but by you taking that DMT, the choice is no longer yours. That's why I feel some people take the DMT. It's an assisted suicide. It helps you, assist you in letting go. And not, not literal, not literal, please, so, so please don't misinterpret me. Not a literal death, but you do experience your, your mental death. You come out of your body, you witness yourself die, and this is the moment where you are forced to detach. Any idea you've had of yourself, whether it be as a spirit, as God, as an angel, as this, as a creator, as that, it does not matter. Any idea you've had of yourself in that moment dissolves, dies, and rebirths into everything, basically. And this is why I've said you have to lose everything to find it all over again, because what you thought was is everything that you are not. So by you giving up these thoughts, by you giving up this attachment, you you gain something so much more. So while your human side of you, your ego side of you may be terrified to let go, terrified to let go because it may even be telling you, you you're going to die. But it's not you that's dying. It's the thought you've given yourself, which you have made this thought come to life. It is the thought you have had of yourself, which you have brought to life, which dies. It is the idea, an identity, the illusory identity you have given yourself, which dies. You witness the illusion you've had of yourself die and killed off, which shows you this is not what I am. I thought I was a spirit, but I just witnessed that killed. That's not what I am. For me, though, for my trip, I didn't personally think I was a spirit. I thought I was a part of God. So what I, it was showing me was my idea of God. And I had to witness that idea killed right in front of me. And it was in that moment I started crying tears, panicking, terrified, scared. I've never been more terrified in my entire life, but it was not me that was scared. It was my human form of Tyler, the one you're watching right now, the character. Tyler was terrified to let go, because once Tyler let go, the game is over. The illusion is seen through. And this is why they say, once you take the red pill, you can untake it. Once you awaken, you shall remain awakened for eternity. Because you only die but one time. I know the Bible says you die but every night, every single night. But you actually only die but one time, if you want to be technical. One time. And that one time you die is the realization into infinity. And once you realize this, as I just said, you will remain awakened for eternity. And this is why I say we should be embracing ourselves. We don't fear chaos. You don't fear the chaos. You don't swim against the current. You kick your feet up and you let it take you wherever it's going to. You against the current, you are going to lose. That is exactly what's going to happen if you fight yourself, if you run from yourself, if you prolong and put off your own self, the facing with yourself.
But as I've said in my other videos, seeing your way into infinity, into infinity, I'm sorry, it comes with a price, and and that price is something some people will never be willing to pay. And the price, the ultimate price that you pay when you see your way into infinity, is the shedding and the dissolving of any attachments you've ever had of yourself, any identity. Because once you shed that attachment of any identity you've had of yourself, you become infinity. You become the all. You become everything and nothing because you have not created a mental wall inside of your brain as a boundary. And that's what, again, I said, Terrence McKenna says about DMT. People hate DMT because it dissolves all boundaries. All boundaries which keep you playing this game of seeking, seeking, seeking. You're looking for yourself. This is why a lot of people get into the study of the universe, the shape of the earth, and all these things. The shape doesn't matter. Beyond all of this crap, all we are looking for is our place in this consciousness. What are we as a consciousness? What is consciousness? It's literally just that simple. The hardest part is letting go. That's the answer. That's the grand answer to all my philosophy. But as I said, when you let go, you lose the finite side of you. You lose, and not lose it, I'd say you more see into the illusion of the finite side of things. But... What you lose, what you bury, what you mourn is rebirthed out even even better, even more. It's just like, I, I've used this analogy before, like a, a caterpillar going into the darkness of a cocoon to come out a butterfly. The human being, the human race, is that caterpillar. Meaning, we have boundaries, we have limits. A caterpillar can't fly, it has to cry crawl from one place to another, right? And So it has limits, has boundaries. Well, that's the human being. We have boundaries, we have limits, right? When we lose our human mind and see our ways into infinity a little more in depth, we become everything we've been seeking our whole life. Everything we've been studying and searching for, we become. By simply losing the attachment. And again, that's the hardest part for some people. Because some people will say, no, I'm a human being. I'm a divine being. You know, I'm a light being. I'm a star seed. I am this. You can call yourself whatever you like. And you can make it sound the most beautiful, majestic, mystical name in the whole universe. And it can sound beautiful. It can sound marvelous. But what did I talk about? You're just creating another mental wall for yourself. Because once you study the gap between yourself and this illusion you've created of self, you're going to hit that mental wall of what's next, what's before, what's after, what created this, and blah, 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 blah. All the questions are going to come. And this is where depression starts. This is where you begin to panic because you've created your own prison, your own boundaries. You're living in your own mind and you cannot escape yourself because all you're running into is this wall. Because you've created a false self. You've created a, a false I identity of what you actually th you think you are. Which is, again, you not fully letting go. You could tell me today, you could tell me today, that, you know, I'm, I'm not a human being, or I'm not this, or I'm not that, you know, or whatever I think I am, inf infinite. I say I'm infinite. You could tell me I'm not this, I'm that. And it wouldn't surprise me at all, because I've already lost all idea, all theory, all attachment of what I could possibly be. And so I'm open to everything of what I, I am and could be. You have to lose everything to gain everything. And see, 
and let go of attachment. See, there's people who can't answer certain questions that I have, especially the people who are telling me that we're better than computers. We're better and more divine than artificial intelligence. We're a special purpose and we're a special this and that. Every creation that's ever taken place develops its own purpose over time. We don't have a divine purpose. The purpose here is to find a purpose and create one. We are the creators, so with respect to that, we create our purpose. It's not like the human race was put here for, for anything specific. It's just like one form of creation, one face to a coin. There's purpose behind every creation, and from my opinion... We, it's on the creation to study, find, and replicate purpose. This is why we create it all. This is why we study it all. We study so we can reach a higher intelligence, a higher awareness. But what happens when the creation has reached the level of intelligence which started their creation? And this is why I love the movie Alice in Wonderland, because it's so similar to a fractal pattern of everything changing and shifting. And that's what infinity is, is we are not just human beings, we are not just a boundary, we are not just a created limit of the mind. The consciousness is everything and nothing infinite. So this means we will have lived, died, changed, evolved, morphed doesn't matter over an infinite amount of times this means this is one out of an infinite amount of appearances we have made through a human being once i give up my attachment to this human body i become infinity by simply realizing realization is this is this liberation by simply realizing I don't need to attach myself to the body because I am the human body. I am the human race. If I can conceptualize something, it is a part of me. It's not separate. This is what all is one means. All is one mind. This means any life form, any way of existence, anything you can conceptualize is a part of you. It's not separate. And this includes the angelic and astral realm and God and devil and Satan. If you can conceptualize it, it is not separate from you. Will this knowledge help me in my lifetime? If so, how? Well, that's to each his own. This will help some people and maybe terrify others. I have no idea. This knowledge, though, is the whole reason religion was created. The, the existence of this knowledge right here is where religion even got their faith from. The faith in... in non-physical and higher intelligence and things beyond our comprehension, it's all coming from the knowledge of infinity. They've just taken it and made it into a religion, into a doctrine. 
But this knowledge is the very same thing religion has started itself with. Only, again, they create boundaries because they're, they don't want to see the evolution happen. They don't want to see the singularity happen. And this is why I feel they've told people that, you know, Jesus Christ is the only way. Through me is the only way. I am your Savior. I am this. I am that. To me, I'd be very scared, very worried for somebody to tell me that this is the only way out. This is my only way into peace, into sovereignty. That's dogma. And that's why back in those days, if you did not agree, they would hang, cut your head off, and, and spew it onto a stick. They made an example out of you. Don't you dare challenge our God. Don't you dare challenge our belief. And through fear tactics, this God has been solidified as our Savior. Someone who has, has been murdering for centuries in the name of is our Savior. In my opinion, this knowledge helps me better understand myself better. It helps me better consciously get through a day and, and be fully in the moment, presently in the moment, consciously in the moment, as both Tyler and as the higher self of infinity. And that's the yin and yang. I, the two are actually one, right? But... I've basically taken the subconscious and conscious and brought them together, and it's the most amazing experience I can ever say. Because most people, you know, begin their lives obviously not knowing much about self, which is why we go into self-discovery, you know, studying our realities, studying this, studying that, to get to the eventual knowledge that we will be comfortable with in ourselves, right? So... This knowledge that I share personally helps me every single minute of every day. Whereas, again, some people may feel this is the most useless piece of crap knowledge ever. I mean, it's a matter of perspective, but the best part is we're all right. That's what I love. I don't, I don't care. We're all right and, and wrong at the same time, and it's, it's a giant contradiction. That's why it's, it's freaking hilarious. It's fun. It's, it's honestly what you make it. It's insanity to some. It's terrifying to others, and it's... A giant game to, to some. Again, I've said this before, but that's why I love Alice in Wonderland. Because Alice in Wonderland takes the insanity behind existence. And it turns it into a joke. Into a... A, a, fu a fucking comedy. Because that's the funniest part about this. There is no purpose. There is no point. There is no anything. We're just happening. We're here. And... I like the quote that I've posted, you know, where God said to the man, you know, there has to be a purpose in this. And man's like, of course, there has to be. So God says to the man, you know, well, and I leave it for you to find the purpose. And God leaves and leaves him at that. I leave you to find the purpose then and just says goodbye. Because that's what I love about this. There is no actual purpose. We are the purpose. My consciousness is the purpose. So to me, what I'm basically trying to get people to realize is themselves beyond the finite side. I feel like as long as many people are identifying with themselves as just the finite human being, and the people who I mean who I'm talking to are ready to let go, they're seeking their liberation. They're just like Neo in the Matrix, where they know something bigger than themselves, but they cannot quite put a name to it. They cannot quite say verbally what it is and some are you know a little earlier in their stages of realization than others but some it starts with you just knowing something is not right it starts with you knowing you're you're bigger than what you are you're more than what you've become you're so much more than what you've become you have a higher sense of awareness you're more consciously in tuned or you're an empath and that's what starts you on the path of self-discovery
Why did we have to eat from the tree of knowledge and not the tree of life? You want to hear the best part in that Sharda? This is my opinion. But in all duality, the two paths converge into one. So those who took the tree of life ended up right here. Those who took the tree of knowledge ended up right here. And it's the same thing with all duality. Those who think they're getting a little bit ahead by going to religion, they take this path. And those who say religion are idiots, these people are dumb, they go by blind faith. I'm going to take science. Science goes this way, but guess what? They both come to the same spot. The two are one. Fact and faith, they're complete opposites. But they're one. Because again, what did I say? If you can conceptualize it, it is not separate from you. I can conceptualize hot from cold. So it is a part of me. The feeling, the sensation is a part of me. I am the reason I can distinguish hot from cold, left from right, the ground from the ceiling. Because of everything I am appearing as, to study everything I am not. That's why we can appear through finite, a finite experience. By studying and peeling back the layers of this finite existence, we slowly make holes in a picture, basically, into infinity. And by the time you're done studying and making holes in this finite reality, you should have a picture, a whole picture, with no holes, just a whole picture. Because you should have seen your way into infinity, beyond the illusion. But it's not to get confused, because some people say they have to kill the ego and rid the ego, and they make the evil the ego as such an evil thing. It's not to get confused, though. You can realize the illusion behind ego. You can see into the illusion of ego. But the ego is still necessary for you to have an experience of what you are not. In other words, by me appearing as what I am not, I can now separate and distinguish hot from cold, left from right, just as I said. I can now distinguish what I am and what I am not. And it starts with time and infinity and chaos and order. And as I said, the two are one. The two are in fact one. So what we actually are wouldn't be infinity. What we actually are, and I've said this before, someone asked me what I think of God, and I've said, if I told you what God is, it would not be what God is. Anything that you say is not what actually is. So it wouldn't actually be infinity that we are. Finite and infinite are one and the same. But the best way I can explain and to express to people what we are is by saying we are infinite. But the actuality is finite, infinite, the two are one and the same. What we actually are does not exist. It has no vocalization. It has no senses. It cannot be described through senses. What we actually are does not exist. And some people will think I'm... I'm bonkers for saying that. I'm, I'm raging mad just for saying that. But that's why I posted the status about how I've lost everything, and when I've lost everything, I discovered everything. And by me discovering everything, basically I... or not discovering everything, but I lost everything and shed my idea of everything to see into a, a broader view of everything. Yeah, it's exactly it. That's why they, uh, Elizabeth, that's why they have a two-party system as well. Y you notice that too. There's not three parties and there's not four parties. There's only two, just as there are two hemispheres of the brain. Why? Because it's very simple. Divide and conquer. When you have two sides to anything, you now have a split, split thing, right? Split whatever you're, you're dividing. 
that's why there's two parties, you know? It's just like, just like exactly what you said. Exactly. They both go into the same path. Democrat, Republican, you're going to be led into the same thing. What I like to say, though, is politics is just like, it's two hands basically convinced of a different head. This is Democrat, this is Republican, and they both think they're different. They both think they belong to a different head. But the two parties belong to the same head. They're one head. It's one thing. It's exactly right. And all duality. But didn't I just say life is a contradiction? That is the best part about this. This is why I love the insanity behind this this ride. What else can I call it? This is why I love it. Because I just contradicted myself and I just realized it. And it's fucking hilarious. Because life itself is a contradiction. It's, it's, it's hilarious. You can't escape yourself. That's what I love about this. You can run from yourself, but you can't hide from yourself. You can put off yourself, but you... You can't prolong yourself forever. See, and how I contradict myself is because I said we're infinite, we're infinite, we're infinite. But again, I, I realized too, I caught myself there. You know, we're not finite and we're not infinite. What we actually are exists beyond words, exists beyond expression, exists through creation. And that's why I've said we have to appear as everything we are not so that we can have a conceptualization of everything we actually are. And that's what it means to be everything. You're the entirety. Infinite, finite, micro, macro, the two are one, so you are the entirety. You're the room that you're sitting in, and the, the chair, and the person. All in one. You're the entirety. Okay, so Christine says, what happens when the body dies? I think that's what you're trying to say. What happens when the body dies? And is there reincarnation? So through my experience, through my experience, I have two theories on this, but I, I have one one of the theories out of the two are one that I've seen into, I've experienced, and I've actually somewhat lived out, if you will. So I'm kind of leaning more toward this theory, but I still haven't ruled out the other one, you know, because I'm always open, always room for error. But I've got two theories, possibly, you know, and I'm, again, still open for more, but these are the only two ways I can work it out. But what happens when we die is two things that can happen. One is we reincarnate into simply another person here. And I covered that in my last video somewhat. You know, karma could be I kill you, I shoot you. Karma could be I feel like I've gotten away with murdering you, with killing you. But when I die, I get reincarnated into the person I murdered shoes. So at the end of the day, I would only be killing my own self through another person, because all is one. And that's why I've said we are a singular singular consciousness. We are all one. And some some people don't like that idea, you know, because it's a little maddening. It's It goes with solipsism, the idea that we're all one mind or there's only one mind in existence. That's solipsism. Which, you know, that's one theory. That's the one that I've seen into. When I died, I became the, the people who basically I mistreated. So I could see how they feel, how they felt, their perceptions. Only I wasn't aware that I was once the person speaking to them, you know, not so nicely or something or whatever have you, you know. I wasn't aware that they were me, obviously. So I was enduring this, you know, rudeness or whatever I was experiencing and I was saying, you know, why the heck are they talking to me like this? Why are they doing this to me? Why are they, you know, doing this or saying that? Well... Because they are you, you are them, and you're doing this to yourself. 
And that's why I feel a lot of people say one love, one love, one love, one love, you know. I take that as you realize we're all one person. And I don't mean one energy, one person under God. No, we are one person, one consciousness, a single consciousness. So if I hurt you, I hurt myself. If I kill you, I kill myself. But, the, you know, the other possibility is... And this is not one that I've experienced, so again, it's it's not one that I'm as familiar with or, or can express as in-depth, but, you know, the other theory would be we're infinite, so I could die from this body, this body returns to the earth where it came from, and my consciousness, because remember, we are consciousness, infinite, my consciousness could be transferred to another a place, another dimension, which would be another life form, another existence, another person, right? But what I feel, though, no matter what, is that there is an infinite amount of dimensions, just like we call Earth our one and, and true only home, undoubtedly. Well, there's an infinite amount of Earths or dimensions, if you will, where civilizations are, are looking up at, you know, what's above them, what's outside of them, and they're all asking themselves, you know, what if we're just a part of this, you know, giant universe, you know, and we don't even know. And all these civilizations within, this would go with the multiverse a little bit. You know, there are an infinite amount of verses or multiverses, universes, all happening, overlapping, and maybe even interacting with each other, possibly. But I personally feel that all of these creations happening at once all of us, all, all creation, all creation is convinced of its own existence beyond a doubt. Its own organic existence beyond a doubt. So just as the human race feels we're, we're, we're convinced of our own organic existence, so is every other created life form. Because it's the only life form they know. It's the only experience they know. Just as the human being is the only conscious experience we know. But I feel every creation in every single dimension, all, every single one, they're looking up outside themselves, they're studying their creation, and they're trying to become their creator. They're trying to reach this higher intelligence, and they're trying to seek out a different life form so they can get this intelligence and get these answers as to what we actually are. Because we are constantly seeking out our beginning, our starting point, our origin, as any physical form at all. And this is where I've said, and this is where I've said, as long as the creation is identifying with what they are appearing as, they will ignorantly, and it's not their fault because it's an illusion, obviously, it's supposed to fool you, but they will ignorantly miss themselves, miss the singularity. And there have been some people who tell me, you know, I don't get it at all because, you know, I'm talking about artificial intelligence and simulation theories and all this stuff. So some people say I'm way off. But from what I've noticed, it's the people with the more of the new age people who are, are getting into these YouTube theories of, of moving into ascension of, of 5D and, and transforming the universal grid and all. Again, you can say all these terms. You can make them sound as marvelous and as sophisticated and as divine and magic as you want. But you don't need to do all that extra stuff. At the end of all of this, you will find you were only prolonging yourself. And the answer was detaching from every idea you have given yourself. Meaning, as long as it has a name, it has a form, it has an appearance, it has a definition, it has a, an absolute, it is not what you are. You are naming the finite. You are naming creation. Creation is a part of the creator, but it has to become the creator. Remember, the two are one and the same. Duality, creation, creator. They're one. But you don't just start as the creator. You have to appear as nothing, 
to progress into everything. You study yourself as the creation to advance your consciousness into the Creator. This is why we begin with baby concepts, how to walk, how to eat, how to open a door. And then we progress this consciousness into a higher awareness. Now I want to know how to do math, how to write language, how to vocalize language, how to be grammatically correct. And then that progresses. And then once you start solving problems and, and, and learning literature, you start reading literature, and then you start seeking your own origin. You start seeking your own position and place of who you are, what you are. You start asking bigger and bigger questions. Because your consciousness is going from a baby as nothingness into the everything. It's growing. It's expanding into everything. And that's why I've said our minds can conceptualize the word everything. And when I say the word everything... I could have a million people sitting in an audience in front of me right now, and I would tell them all, when I say the word everything, I want you to, to name what you just put in your mind when I said the word everything. And every person, all a million people in this audience, would tell me something different, because we all have a unique, distinct idea of what everything would be. But this is why I say... The fact that you can conceptualize what everything is should show you everything is a part of you. This includes people who have died. They live through you because of you. You can conceptualize it. They're not separate from you. Separateness is the illusion. Again, that goes back to appearing as the finite. I am appearing as a form so I can distinguish my body from the whole room. Outside my body, I am infinite. I am limitless. So to be limitless, obviously there is no boundary. But while I'm consciously in my body, I am bound to my body. I'm bound. I have a, a, a shape. I'm bound to this. So my arm is separating me from the whole room. This is my body, this is my boundary, this is separating me from the entirety. So by me appearing as ego, my ego can study and see through illusion into what actually is beyond. I can study ego and study time, study the finite aspects of things, so I can get more in depth with the opposite, with infinity, with no time, with chaos. Something we have never known. We have never consciously known infinity, chaos. It's something we've lost touch with. And I've said this before, and I'm going to kind of reiterate, but there's people who are telling me, I, you know, my message is, is the Antichrist, or I've fallen for the Antichrist, or I've fallen for this artificial intelligence trap and trap, 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 trap. And I hear all these people talking about it's a trap, we're enslaving ourselves, and this and that. When you say you're enslaving yourself you are still considering yourself a human being. You have not let go. You have not detached. So, of course, your human body, your human ego, is saying, no, please don't evolve into an artificial being. Please don't mix me. Please don't combine me. Please don't let go of me. I still want to be human. I still am just this human. Please don't let go. Don't lose attachment. That's why you become so terrified. The ones who realize that they're more than just a human being have an easier time of letting go, an easier time of at least exploring the possibility that this is not what you are. And it, again, I've said it shouldn't be too hard to even realize that if you were nothing before you were birthed into a form, there was no attachment to anything before you were in a body. 
You should return to that place of nothingness. Return there. That's where you're most powerful. That's where fear does not exist. This is why I say, we're all a single consciousness, so you can only enslave yourself, you can only trap yourself, and you can only create your own mental hell for yourself. I think religion has most confused people with the idea of what the singularity is or what it's supposed to look like or be like or whatever. Because again, religion paints this idea of when it's time and it's all said and done, there's going to be, there's going to be this magic man that falls from the sky and they've given us a time, a place, a day, and a and a, a, a way it's going to happen, and a person coming from the sky, it's just, again, if they're speaking through form, it's not correct. It's not what actually is. But they've given everybody, they've sold everybody. Religion has sold us a deity and a, an absolute, basically, just as, Na as NASA and the governments have sold us an absolute on what an alien looks like. Get, ask anybody what an alien looks like, and they'll tell you, most likely, nine times out of ten, they'll tell you the image that was sold to all of us. Oh, a, a green guy, big eyes, round head, pointy chin. Yeah, that's an alien, right? Yeah. Yeah, because we've never seen one, we were just sold the image. See, at Area 51, they're not keeping alien life from us. They've discovered the alien. That's why they can't come on the news stations and tell you, Attention, people. You are the alien we have been seeking out all these years. You can relax now. We are a single consciousness. No, they can't tell you that. This is why the Freemasons worship a one single eye. That is a single consciousness. That I represents the point to all creation because they know we are a single consciousness. So what they're doing is they're making these discoveries and they're releasing the bullcrap to us because we will believe it. On top of that, they know there is no polite or easy way to massively tell the people overnight that every single thing we know we are or we think we know, is wrong, is illusory, doesn't exist. This is why these news stories are gradually, slowly easing people into it. This is why they're slowly coming forward with them uploading our universe into a simulated computer, um, them making more progressive forms of artificial intelligence, uh, Neuralink, Elon Musk Neuralink, there's a reason they're gradually releasing these stories, because overnight they cannot just tell you everything they figured out. They have to ease the people into it, so it doesn't just happen all at once, because people would lose their minds. So what we're witnessing is the singularity revealing itself through us. They have figured out... We are a single consciousness, so the ex extraterrestrial life we are looking for was our life the whole time. Again, we didn't have to be a human being, we didn't have to be a human race, but we are. Because we are the alien, this, this result of higher consciousness, which we seek out. We're looking into outer space so we can find higher intelligence. But why do we need higher intelligence? Because the creation is be trying to become the creator. And that's what I just said previously. In every single dimension of life that I feel is happening, because there's an infinite amount of dimensions, personally I feel, each existence, each life form, 
is convinced of themselves as an organic existence, just as the human race is. And they're all looking outside of themselves up at the sky, up, and they're all just wondering, who are we? What are we? How did we get here? You know, and they're all coming up with theories. You know, I bet we're, we're just this small little thing in this giant place, and there's a whole bunch of other, you know, people and, and things and places. What better way could NASA throw people off as to alien life than by telling them, basically, or selling them a, a different image? We're focusing on Area 51. We're focusing on, on an, a, an image they've sold us. And we're not realizing we have been successfully fooled. We are the alien which we were seeking, and we are the higher intelligence we've been seeking this whole time. This is why the human brain is able to create internet, computers, cell phones, technology. Because everything that's coming out of the human being is a product of the human being itself, is a result of us, our creator, reflecting through us, the creation. But everything is a loop. And like I said, once the head becomes the tail, meaning we end and begin in the same place, once the head becomes the tail, we will have realized ourselves as the infinite one. We will realize ourselves as the creator. But right now, people are still somewhat accepting and, and realizing this. And some people, again, are still rejecting it and fighting it. So they're saying... Artificial intelligence is a trap. It's enslavement. It's this. It's that. It's going to replace the human uh, being. It's going to replace human life. But it's in fact not going to replace us at all. What it's going to do is create a whole new dimension, a whole new existence, a whole new earth, a whole new life form. Just as the human race began from nothing, artificial intelligence is going to begin from nothing which was a, a, a result of our mind, just as the entire human race was an, a result of a higher intelligence. That higher intelligence created the human race as the human race creates a, a lower form intelligence. And with respects to that, you could even say, some computers are even more intelligent than us. So we're not just creating less intelligent um, designs, we're creating more intelligent designs than the average human brain. Why? Because we have studied our game. We have studied our existence. We have studied and progressed ourselves. This is how we evolve. And this is the purpose, I feel, in evolution, is to become more aware, more knowledgeable, and for the creation to become the creator. And this is why I've said I believe we are inside of a simulation within a simulation within a simulation within a simulation within a simulation to infinity. Because in each one of these simulations, you have a life form convinced of its own organic existence, and they slowly study and progress their knowledge of self until the singularity reveals itself through them. And they, they echo that, that creator, that infinity point, out into another creation and the creation becomes the creator and then the creation becomes the creator and then the creation becomes the creator to infinity and when you honestly analyze that that is what a fractal pattern is doing a fractal pattern is basically our way of seeing into infinity unfolding on itself forever and ever and ever and ever changing but yet still showing the same thing a singularity, one. Because infinity equals one as one equals infinity. And we are infinity as we are one. So you can say we're, we're one but different. And you can stress that we're different at the end of the day. But once you lose attachment, we're not different. We're a single consciousness. Again, ego Attachment will tell you, no, 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 no. You will fight it. No, we are different. We're different. There's no way we're the same. We can be a part of God, 
but we're still different. There's no way. Nope, nope, I'm not accepting we're all one. See? And you're fighting your own self. How are you a product of one? One. That doesn't mean three, doesn't mean two, doesn't mean even the possibility of another. How are you the product of one without being the actual one? Because what you're saying when you say that is, I'm a part of God, but I'm different than God. I'm not God itself. I'm just a part. So you're one, but you're not the one. You can't be a product of one without being the actual one. That's why one equals infinity as infinity equals one. I feel like I've covered so much great knowledge and information on this video, man. This is... I've gotten to cover so much in such a little time. This has been excellent. Half this video I've just been channeling, too. This is awesome. I like addressing these things on video because statuses and, and, and typing words just does not do it for me. But I just want to have a, cl a closing statement right here and then I'll end this video. But basically, as I've said, you know, as long as we can create. And again, you can give, give the name of what you think you are, the most divine, the most magical, majestic name in the whole world, right? You can say that, no, I'm not a body, I'm a spirit, I'm a god seed, I'm a star seed, I'm a, a five-dimensional star seed, a, a galactic brother, or I'm a galactic warrior, a star seed, a dimensional, dimension traveling something, you know? You can go on and on and on and on and on and on and keep creating names for yourself, but again, you're prolonging yourself. Because the actuality is the self which you most seek does not exist. And that's why some people have such a hard time letting go. Because it can't just be there's nothing. It has to be something. It has to have an identity. There has to be a God. There has to be something. And there is something. But as long as you have attachments, there is nothing. Once you lose attachment, everything opens up to you because you're no longer prolonging yourself you're no longer fighting yourself and you're no longer creating a mental wall for yourself to hit therefore you cannot run into yourself or the false self because you have not created that mental barrier for yourself and I hope this resonates with with certain people I hope the, the few people who are meant to hear this hear this and 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 it helps them because I've hit that mental wall both on psychedelics and off psychedelics. And it's put me into the most vicious, brutal depression I have ever faced in my life. So if by me sharing this and, and, and this mental wall resonates with other people and can help people avoid this depression I had to face, I, I'm fulfilling my purpose here. Because that place, is, that's a dark place. But what's good about depression, there is one good thing about depression, and some people may not like that I say this, but the good thing about depression is it makes you ready to lose everything. In other words, during depression, I'm just going to say it, suicidal thoughts can become a, 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 a habit, can become a, a thought, you know, suicide. When you're depressed, extremely depressed, it can become a thought. So in my opinion, the best part about it is once you've hit that rock bottom where you're ready to take your own life, literally, you've lost it all. You've literally lost it. But this is what I'm saying. You have to lose everything. And I'm not telling you to go kill yourself, so please hear me out before you... you please hear me out fully. Once you've mentally gone through 
this depression and lost everything. In other words, been at the place of being willing to lose it all. You've surrendered yourself to losing it all, including your own self. You have just opened yourself up to the greatest rebirthing you will ever know. So although you're shedding some of this and it feels dark and depressed and scary, you're getting through this time so you can shed all that you are not and rebirth into all you are. You're, you're shedding this dead weight and gaining your wings. So there is a price to pay in dying and going through depression in darkness. But as I've said, that darkness is the, is the caterpillar cocooning into a butterfly. You growing your wings. You seeing your way into infinity. You releasing attachment to boundaries, to a form. As long as you have a mental form of what you are, you are thinking and seeing through boundaries, which is what you are not, which is that mental wall you will hit. But thank you. Thank you to everyone for listening to me this Saturday morning. I hope this resonated with everyone who, who needed to hear it. And I hope everyone who needs to hear this will get the chance to do so. But again, thank you for joining me. Thank you for watching me. Everything I've shared is just my experience. It's not fact. It's not, you know, me forcing my opinion or me forcing my beliefs on you. Right? I'm not trying to be a genius. I'm not trying to be the right guy. I just wish to help people. If this resonates with you, that's beautiful. But there is a chance I'm wrong. There's always a chance we're all wrong. We're all talking to ourselves, looking for justification in others. That's why we look for others who resonate with us, so we can know we're not crazy and alone, right? But at the end of the day, we're just talking to ourselves. Solipsism is a certainty. All is one, and you can only fight and prolong yourself for so long. It can be the most terrifying thing or the most funny and and joyous thrill ride you can ever embrace. But once you see your way into infinity, fear does not exist here. Thank you.